David's research interests within HCI are computer vision, spatial computing, algorithmic modeling, and digital sensing technology. His topic for today is interactive data for the web using the JavaScript library DSJ3. Please join me in welcoming David. Hey. Hello, guys. Thank you so much. Oh, you're picked up on this one if you keep yourself muted. Yeah. Okay. Thank you guys so much for joining. Can you hear me? Yes, everyone can hear you. Gotcha. Thank you so much for joining. Uh, so today I will be talking about the, uh, the JavaScript library. Uh, uh, JS. This is kind of like a beginner tutorial um, and largely um, how we may um, navigate uh, coding languages for beginners and how uh, we may start to explore um, online libraries and documentations as tools that can be developed uh, or explored uh, as reference. I'm um, going to go through a few examples here. So uh, I feel like the goals of this workshop are number one, to introduce you to Debra and uh, some examples uh, to explore JavaScript libraries as uh, tools, uh, you know, exploring how to navigate library documentation, example references, and the API. And then lastly, we work through a very, very, very basic example, uh, just to kind of get a feel for what the workflow is like. And uh, the set of workflow is uh, using HTML, uh, loading Debra.js, uh, creating a basic scatter plot. Loading the data into that uh, scatter plot and uh, scripting and activity, and then positioning uh, these these things into the uh, into your web page. Um, so I'll start off with a few examples of um, where Debu has been used. So I'm going to share my screen. So here's the uh, the D3 website. Uh, the top here, I kind of like the overview of the library. Um, and right, this is D3.js, is a JavaScript library for uh, manipulating documents based on data. Uh, D3 helps bring data to life using HTML, SVG, and CSS. Uh, D3's emphasis on web standards gives, gives you the uh, full capabilities of modern browsers without tying yourself to a proprietary framework, combining power visualization components and data-driven approach to DOM uh, manipulation. So right here, we kind of have um, these examples, and I'll drop this link in the, uh, the chat here. Uh, for you to view before and after this workshop. But in that GitHub file that I shared earlier, um, a lot of these um, links are in the, uh, the workshop that HTML document that I included. Uh, so we'll start with, with a few examples. Um, if you're familiar with the New York Times and, um, and, and kind of the data visualization team in the visual investigation department, uh, DV is actually a central tool that we're using um, within the web experiences. A lot of this data is processed in R, but um, to kind of like make this data approachable, accessible online, we're using D3. Um, and so if you're familiar with kind of like the, the, the general basic web framework, it's usually HTML, which just scripts, um, which just scripts your basic text in, uh, in images and in, in, in styling off the web page, and then CSS, which allows you more control over those stylings. And then JavaScript, which allows you to, to kind of like add depth with your computation to those things. And JavaScript is the language. And then you have libraries of JavaScript, which essentially uh, pre-written um, algorithms for you to, to like embed into your uh, web page. So this is one example uh, from 2012 showing counties uh, blue and red moving left and right. Um, and as said earlier, it, it does use um, SVG documents. And so this is something you can quite literally draw in, let's say, Adobe Illustrator or, or Photoshop and then bring it into D3.js to, uh, to animate. Uh, this is one example exploring that. This is another example by another publication, uh, The Guardian. Um, Looking at Alaska's indigenous communities um, and the isolation, and communities facing isolation um, and disaster, you know, as ice melts. So, you know, as we have our, we have these really incredible animations that kind of provide more context as to what this data is, um, kind of pre, pre library phase on the internet, usually data was static and or you have to animate this. So, if you guys probably remember uh, Flash or Dreamweaver, those are all uh, like online methods of doing that stuff, but D3 kind of makes it easier. Uh -huh. Here's another example, you know, uh, exploring multiple uh, mediums of data. Data not only just exists as numbers, but um, more so through images. There's really incredible uh, interactions you can, you can kind of explore with, with the, the data. This is again, New York Times piece, exploring a uh, fashion week um, uh, documents. Um, like another example is, um, the constellations of directors and their stars. Um, during the Oscars that the New York Times again did with their team, uh, kind of showing these, these some like webs of interaction and you know, things like that. So usually the, the workflow 
is an SVG um, and then in those kind of custom examples and documentation files, you know, how, how to do these things. Um, but yeah, so for today, uh, we'll be working with a very basic um, example that we kind of found here for us, but it's essentially the scatter plot, and I'll be showing you how to, to kind of work with these documents. And so, um, as I said earlier, this is a this is a like a beginner uh, workshop, and so I'll, I'll show you how to kind of like work with pre-written examples towards kind of finding uh, or editing towards your own like memes. So at the top here, we kind of have a a basic HTML setting up. Um, this is this is what you would type essentially into kind of like your IDE. Um, but before we go further, has everybody had the opportunity to download on Atom.io? Just uh, just uh it's in the uh, the workshop file, but I will add it into the chat here. If you also have a text editor or um, a WordPad, that's also fine. You just have to save your file as an HTML, or if you just download that um, file from the, uh, the GitHub here, um, just open that. Uh, you can edit it from there. Essentially, I'll be editing my document in Visual Studio Code. So if you have that as well, that is also fine. Um, so, I'm sorry, is it sharing the desktop? Oh, no, it's good. This is the verification code. Gotcha. So here's our workshop file. So the GP documentation uh, examples I showed here also include in that file. And then firstly, we're going to download Adam.io. Uh, and if you already have um, an IDE, we can also just use that. And then just visit the, uh, the, the GitHub page linked in this document to gather or to get this file that we're working on right now. So I'm um, in the green. Um, that's kind of our, uh, there's kind of like instructions, um, kind of like the plan for what the, each of those um, lines of code mean. So first, we're going to load uh, duty.js, which is um, a JavaScript file. So this is this is like an API that is referenced, and so um, including this is important because some of the lines of code that we're writing, you know, are referenced in this thing. Um, and then the next phase we will be exploring is uh, developing a div for our scatter plot. So essentially, a div on a web page is essentially a container. And within that container, we're putting our data um, visualization into it. Um, and we'll position that div on our page. So, for example, if you want it to be centered, um, right aligned, left aligned, um, we're selling that with CSS here. So, right now, I have it as a, an absolute position. It's a 30 um, from the left. And that's kind of where that is. And then right here is where we start to get into our D3 programming. So, this script tag is essentially how you call a JavaScript uh, file in. HTML, or you can kind of call it as like a separate, uh, kind of like a separate uh, JavaScript file that's on your computer. Uh, here we, we start to set the dimensions of our of our scatter plot within within that grid. And so, for example, for you can set it to be 450 by 450, or you can set it based on how the parameters that present themselves um, as we can like. Um, building out our web page. Um, then this is where we start to append the data to our scatter plot. And then this is this is where we're getting our data from. So this is also linked in the uh, in in the GitHub page that I had uh, linked. But essentially, it's uh, just two it's two columns of data, two rows and columns of data um, that are an example of our CSVs. And so um, using data, with data, we work with CSVs. And or um, Excel files and or JSON files. In this case, we're working with the D3.csv. And then if we were to work with the a JSON file, usually kind of like in the line thing, we just do D3.json. 
And um, with the scatter plot, we're, we're also drawing them. And so um, this is how we draw x axis, which is uh, kind of calling a variable of x um, on the object scale linear, and then setting our domain, which is 0 to 3000, and then our range, which is kind of like the width of these parameters we set, and then um, our domain, which is essentially 400,000. And then the interactive aspect of this is uh, calling out uh, tooltips. And so when you hover over a dot on the scatter plot, it will tell you, it will give you context about that dot on the scatter plot and, what, and uh, what it means. And then these are just mouse over functions from JavaScript that allow you to um, interact with these pages based on mouse hovers you know, and things like that. And then this is kind of where and we're adding context. And so um, this is where we kind of concatenate the data um, with, with things I mean, we might want to see. So when the link is at this level, um, there are uh, there are uh, this many plugins and uh, calling these objects because they're calling uh, specific uh, lines of data from the code. So this is kind of what we have right now. And I'll show you an example of what all this looks like in our reference um, those things before. So this is a scatter plot we talked about. So this is this is our domain that we set earlier, um, and this was our range. And then these kind of just tools are different. So when you hover over them, they kind of give you a uh, different context markers as to what each of those uh, aspects mean. So as we said earlier, uh, DD is very useful. Uh, for kind of like looking at what's existing uh, from what the what the authors of library have, uh, have given us. And kind of customizing it to our own needs. And so we'll go through the kind of the customization process. I'll show my entire screen so we can look, so we all have like a better view of what that process looks like going from uh, the editor to uh, to your published artifact. So right here, there it is. Okay, awesome. Sweet. So firstly, I will adjust or we'll adjust the size of the grid. So we go here, we hit that refresh, and there that changes the size of that. Um, and we can start to increase our domain by changing that value in like the domain sheet. Once you go back and just hit refresh, it changes that. We change them according to like the, the shape of our uh, data. So if you have more things you kind of wanted to display on the x-axis, you would increase the domain of, of that value on the x-axis. So right here, uh, we have a very smushed uh, nice data. If we want to space those out, we give it more space. Or in this case, less space. Here's that. I'm kind of see it start to, to, to leak over. And this is kind of where we adjust the size of our the width of our uh, grid. So change to 600, then refresh that page, and then there it is. So at the bottom, we're kind of seeing the uh, context bars pop up, and I'll show you how those are populated. Um, so right here, uh, we have this. A string. So a string is just basically um, text, and then we're calling variables through this uh, JavaScript object from from uh, these files. And what we're doing is we're concatenating different pieces of text with different objects from those things. And so, um, for example, I can change this to um, this is, and then that is. Once we save that and refresh the page, we start to see those things change. So this is 1494, that is 229,500. Uh, and we can kind of customize those things to our needs. And so if we're like, um, this, amount, this amount of oranges costs, that because of 
equation. That would be the data we can change. So for example, do that. So it's kind of how we're, we start to see uh, these things change. We start to play with the styling of this, uh, those dots right there. So right here, kind of this color code. Essentially, this is what's filling each of those dots. And so what we could do is we change that to 0.0.0, essentially would block. And we start to add outlines to each of them. So the stroke line right here, we could change that to magenta. Refresh. And we, it would allow us to kind of like style these. So you have, so you have a, like a branding system um, they kind of develop for a site. Uh, these are things you can kind of plug and play, kind of given these these um, example files. So it also changes to magenta. It doesn't also doesn't have to be a kind of, to be a color code as long as it's, it's kind of like a, a global color reference. It's it's something you can use. Um, And you can also change opacities. So right now I've got a we have an opacity of like 20, um, which reduces opacity. So you can play with how transparent those files are. So we'll play with uh, a value of one. And I'll refresh that. Let's try zero. Yeah, so there it is kind of becoming transparent as we kind of change those things. But right underneath is going to styling. Right here is where, you, where you're at, playing with the, uh, the tool tips. Um, above is where you're kind of processing uh, the uh, data. And then right here is where you're kind of setting the size of your, uh, of your document. But, uh, but yeah, that's about it for, for this. But this kind of like demo. Any questions this far? Where did you get the data? Uh, so the data is an example file from Kaggle. So is anyone familiar with Kaggle? It's kind of like a online source for data scientists. I don't know if you just want to work with data. So you just type in like correlation. This is something I was looking for. So one could be like, you've got correlation, but you can get some correlation and you can actually download uh, that document, like that file. Um, and as a CSV, you would uh, turn it into a CSV and then you would load it into um, a GitHub repository. And here, you can actually host that repository online and it'll call it for you. So that's that's something that um, happens within like web states. It's storing this data on the server, so that's being called. And right here in this kind of like highlighted line is where it's being called um, from that uh, server. And so if you have a Google Drive or a Box Drive and you kind of host it on the online, you can actually copy that link and actually paste it in here. Um, so that um, you know, people aren't kind of accessing you know, your personal information. Um, this can kind of be hosted uh, online. But um, can I show you what the shape of that data looks like in my web space? I just paste that into our web browser. I'll just actually just go and visit, visit it in Yaha. So here it is. Here's that. First axis, which is the X, and then the second axis, which is uh, essentially the, uh, the Y. Uh, this is all that data going through as kind of translated uh, on that plot. So, um, where we kind of had like the D.GL uh, live area in that concatenated text, this is where it's pulling it from. And so, for like this is plus D.GL live area, it's saying 17.10 when we kind of pull over that. And then that is 208,500 uh, because of that. Uh, D dot so price. And so this is kind of where it's calling the data from. And what we're calling it from is a raw file. So once you, could, once you hit raw, um, what you do is you just select this, uh, control X or control C. And then what you can do is you can just paste it in here. So usually you have a Google Drive and it's linking to you know, your file. That is this. That's a, that's a process you can kind of go through. But yeah, that's kind of the workflow of like gathering data 
Thank you. Cool. Yeah. Thank you. I've never heard of Kaggle before. That's so cool. Yeah, Kaggle is an incredible resource for example, example data sets. And so if you have kind of like a hypothesis about some relations that may be happening, like you might want to represent those uh, visually, you can look for similar data sets, you know, into my hypotheses and you like how like uh, experiment with those things. Um, you know, into like gathering, into like spending time gathering this data and like finding out you might not be, <laughs> you know, how you expect it to, to visualize it. But uh, yeah, if your Kaggle is a, a nice resource. Pelican data, and I just assumed it was your like your data. Yeah, so so my Pelican data. <laughs> so so this is an excerpt from a project I'm actually working on. Essentially, I'm working with biologists on the Great Salt Lake um, for my thesis, and I'm with DPL actually been trying to convert this data to um, to for like a granular format. Um, and so the Pelican data you saw in there uh, was the thing I was hypothesizing about me finding something that. You know, computers like so I can play with it, but yeah, this is this is what that public data looks like. It just needs to be <laughs> needs to be turned into some like more granular format. But yeah, thank you. Well, we could all take a few minutes to kind of play with this if okay. we want to just walk around and help people or help people on Zoom if they're like trying to do yeah. things. Okay. Has anyone else here played with D3 before? Yeah, this is my first exposure. I'll walk around. I'm just going to 